Praise the Lord, church. Good evening, everybody. It's a blessing to be back with us once again. Uh, hope everybody been having a blessed week, safe week. So, I you hope know, everybody has been uh, mindful to pray for all those on our prayer and our healing list. Uh, continue to pray for those. Uh, we uh, mention the same one pretty much every week. We have nobody new to put on there this week. Of course, except for uh, Sister Lois Curtis, if you will, continue to pray for Sister Lois Curtis. Amen. And uh, continue to pray for our church, our country, and our president. And of course, continue to pray for Pastor Hill. Okay. Now, we're going to uh, go ahead and have a word of prayer, and then we're going to pick back from our lesson where we left off last week. If you will, bow your heads with me just for a moment. Father God, we thank you for once again for the one privilege to come into your presence. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. We thank you for watching over us throughout this week, Lord. And we thank you for just giving us your peace, Father, that peace that surpasses all understanding. We ask you, dear Lord, to continue to watch over us, Father, and just keep us safe and to take away any fears or anxieties that might be encompassing up on us in any way, Lord. Just bless wherever there is a need. And we'll be mighty careful to give you all the praise and the glory. Father, this we pray in your holy name and for your sake. Amen. All right. Let us get after our lesson here. Now, we're studying on manipulation, cutting the strings of control. Manipulation, cutting the strings of control. And, uh, we talked a great deal last week about the difference between manipulation uh, and persuasion. Amen? So we're going to continue that study today here. Uh, manipulation, cutting the strings of control uh, versus persuasion. Okay? Now, last week, we talked a great, we gave you uh, a great deal about the differences and uh, how manipulation affects us and how uh, persuasion affects us. So we're going to pick back up where we left off last week. I'm going to just review just a little bit. We're not going back too far. Amen. Uh, last week I, was, I told you that misplaced, we talked about misplaced priorities. Amen. Misplaced priorities. What others think is more important than it should be. Recall that? Misplaced priorities. What others think is more important than what it should be. Amen? And that we, we told us last week that at times it goes against our better judgment. It goes against our better judgment and at times going against our conscience. Amen? Identify displaced in the manipulated identity that's displaced in the manipulated. I must have you in my life. Amen. I told you last week, the only thing that we must have in our lives is Jesus Christ. Amen. That's the only thing we must have in our lives is Jesus Christ. I can't live without you. The only thing that we can't live without is God. Amen? So, so don't fall into that rabbit hole about uh, I can't live without you and I can't do without you and, and, and so forth. The only somebody that we need is Jesus Christ. Amen? So, so don't let people manipulate you into believing or thinking that uh, you can do nothing without them. Okay? Or I have to have your proof. I have to have your proof. Uh, that's another thing. You don't have to have anybody to prove. Want somebody to prove you need is Christ. Amen. He tells us in that Matthew 6.33 where we left off at last week where it says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then all these other things will be added unto you. Amen. So 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 you don't have to have nobody's approval except God. Okay? I can't say no. Yes, you can. 
All you have to do is just say no. No is just as good in certain circumstances as yes. You see, I'm afraid I'll be rejected. I'm afraid I'll be rejected if I say no. Well, God don't reject you. Don't worry about that. Don't let that uh, be a stumbling block for you. Amen. They rejected Jesus Christ. So, so who, who do we think we are that we're not going to be rejected? All right? I can't take a stand. Well, listen, if you don't stand for something, if you don't stand for something, you will surely fall for anything. Amen. So, 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 so you got to take a stand for something. And, and when you, if you got to take a stand, take a stand for Jesus. Are you listening to what I'm saying? And, and then we talked about a little bit about performance-based acceptance. Performance-based acceptance. You see, uh, don't worry about people accepting you based on what you can or cannot do. I'm accepted only because of what I do. No. Don't go down that rabbit hole. You are accepted because you are have been justified by God. Amen. You've been accepted because you've been justified by God. You see, I, I have value only if my work is accepted. No, no, please don't, 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 don't do that. You have value because you are a child of God. Not because of your work or what you do or what you cannot do. Your value is based on who you belong to. And that is Jesus Christ. Amen. I have worth only if I please others. No. You have worth regardless. Remember what we showed you last week in that Galatians chapter 1 and verses 10. Amen. Where it says, For I am for am I not trying to win favor of people or of God? Or am I striving to please people? If I still, if I were still trying rather to please people, I would not be a slave or a servant of Christ. Okay? So, so stop trying to please people. As I told you, that bar never stopped getting high. Amen. It's impossible to please the flesh. You can't please people. They, today it might be one thing, tomorrow it might be something else. It's always something. So if you want to please somebody, please God. Please God. Amen. You see, or, or, or people have this thing about, you, you know, loss of independence. Loss of independence. Not allowed to make uh, independent plans. You see, not allowed to make independent plans. Let me tell you, one thing that will cause you to lose a lot of your independence in making plans and, and, and doing things, and that is debt. Debt. It will limit what you can and what you cannot do. Amen? You see, God created us to be free. He don't want us to be enslaved to anything or anybody. Amen? Except for him. All right? So, 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 don't be enslaved to death. Don't be enslaved to man. Don't be enslaved to nothing and nobody except God that's going to not allow you to make independent plans. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Not permitted to have a long time. We all need our own long, a long time. We all need a long time. Amen? You see? Time to be with God. Time to meditate. Time to study His Word. Time to be, just just have some free time for yourself. Okay? And there are some people that they just want to take up all of your time. They want you to be right there doing whatever they want you to do as long as they can, uh, as long as you can be there. Amen? You see? Everybody needs some alone time. I need a long time. You see, I, I, I always I don't I don't put no time constraint uh, on my wife, for instance. Amen. She's free to have as much time to do whatever it is that she wants to do. 
for however long she thinks she needs to do. You see, uh, we don't want to try to control people like that. Amen. Or manipulate people like that. Okay. See, or, 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 or not encouraged to spend money or time separately. All right. Not encouraged to spend money or time separately. You see, we all need to have the freedom to be able to do uh, the things that we want and need to do, as long as it's within reason and as long as it's within responsibility. Amen? You see, some people try to control you with money. You see, and that's another thing. I never try to control my spouse through money. Amen? She's a very responsible person and, and, and she know how to handle money. Uh, I don't put no constraints on her, what she can and cannot do, what she can and cannot spend. She know what her obligations and what her responsibilities are, and she's an intelligent woman. Amen? So I, I don't put those kind of constraints, and don't let nobody put those kind of constraints on you. Amen? You see, because if I don't, if I don't do that, then they'll get angry. Amen? Anger. You see, anger, that, that cause you to, to, to be angry toward people who are trying to manipulate you that way. You see, toward the manipulators, uh, the manipulative situations. You see, people try to manipulate you in all kinds of different ways. You see? Forward yourself for allowing that manipulation. You see, you can be controlled by a manipulator's personality. You can be controlled by people's personality. Did you know that? Did you know you can be controlled like that? For their power? You see? Don't be controlled by anything or anybody except God. Don't, be, don't let people's power, don't let their personality, don't let their uh, status and so forth, don't let that, don't let them manipulate you with that. You see? And, uh, consumed by what the manipulator does. Sometimes we get consumed by what people do. And then we allow that to affect us in the same way. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Consumed by what the manipulator does. Amen? Consumed by what the manipulator plans to do. You see, excuses the manipulator. All right? Sometimes we excuse people for things that they do to us. Oh, they didn't really mean it, you know. Yes, they did. If they did, they meant it to do it. Amen? Quit giving people license to manipulate you and control you. Okay? Because that's not the way God wants us to be. That's not the way he wants us to be in our life. So if you're going to be uh, controlled by anything, be controlled by the word of God. Amen. You know, the Bible tells us to be self-controlled. Right there in, in uh, Galatians chapter 5 and 22, I believe, as, as well as over there in 1 Peter. You know, it tells us to be self-controlled. Don't let anything or anybody else control you. Amen. Uh, you know, we use words like, well, he or she didn't uh, really mean it that way. Well, how did they mean it? If they said it that way, they probably meant it that way. They didn't stop giving people license to manipulate you and control you. Okay? You see, he or she, he, his or her action don't bother me. Okay. Yes, it does. People's action bother you, especially when it's when it's done in such a way uh, that it affects you. It bothers you. We're giving people that uh, excuses to, to, to bother you uh, and to manipulate you the things that they say and the things that they do. Make you think, well, I got to act this way or that way, or, or otherwise, they won't approve of me. Amen? Then there is defensiveness. Defensiveness about relationship. Amen? Not seeing objectively that the relationship is unhealthy. Why do we stay in an unhealthy relationship when we know they're unhealthy? Amen? 
you know, well, you know, I, I, I think things are going to get better, you know. No, if you are in an unhealthy relationship, you need to either get some counseling or if the unhealthy relationship is in, if it's in a physical way, then you need to get out of that relationship. You need to protect yourself both mentally and both physically. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Not facing reality of the need to change. Sometimes we we don't want to change. Change is healthy, but a lot of people are afraid to change. They think, well, if, if, if I if I if I leave him, then I won't have nobody. Or if she leaves me, then I won't have. So so I'll just take whatever they dish out. That's unhealthy. It's unhealthy. And it's not the way God wants us to live our lives. Amen? Not willing to do anything about changing the relationship. If you're in an unhealthy relationship, either get out of the relationship or change what's been doing, done to you in the relationship. Amen? You see, over here in Proverbs chapter 29 and verses 25, it says, Fear of man will prove to be a snare. Amen? But Whoever trusteth in the Lord is kept safe. Whoever trusteth in the Lord is kept safe. So trust in the Lord. He tells us that trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not toward your own understanding. In all your way, acknowledge Him, and He'll direct your path. You see. Now, you might say, well, how is my dependency misplaced if I am being manipulated? How is it this place? Well, listen here. Glad to have If you assume that you must meet all the needs and fulfill the expectations of someone else, amen, then you are dependent too much on yourself. You're dependent too much on yourself. You are taking the role that God alone should have. All right? You're taking the role that only God should have. Uh, I want you to turn with me, if you will. Turn with me to Jeremiah. Go to Jeremiah chapter 17. We're going to look at verses 5. And then also we're going to look at this seventh verse here in Jeremiah. Beginning here at verse 5. Now we're going to do our reading here from the New American Standard Bible. Look what it says here. Jeremiah uh, chapter 17 verse 5. It says, This is what the Lord says. Cursed is the man who trusts in mankind and makes flesh his strength and whose heart turns away from the Lord. Verse 7, blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose trust is the Lord. Amen. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose trust is the Lord. You see, just like I just uh, quoted in scripture to you there uh, in Corinthians. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. Put your trust in the Lord. Amen? You see? Now, we're going to talk a little bit about some of the root causes of being manipulated. Some of the root causes. One is wrong beliefs. You'd be surprised some of the things that you believe that is so wrong. Okay? I must have the approval of others in order to feel good about myself. Well, if that's the case, you're going to be miserable for all your life. You're going to be miserable all of your life if you're waiting on the approval of others to make you feel good about yourself. Amen? Feel good about yourself because you are a child of God. You see, learn how to uh, encourage, be encouraged in yourself. If you wait on other people sometimes to encourage you to make you feel good about yourself, you're going to be a miserable person for a long time. Amen? And here's, some right, here's the right belief. The right belief is I must live for the approval of others, but instead, I realize that God will meet all of my needs, my inner needs. Because he accepts me totally and he loves me unconditionally. Amen. I must not live 
for the approval of others. But instead, I realize that God will meet all of my inner needs because he accepts me totally. And he loves me unconditionally. See, God loves us unconditionally. Uh, other people sometimes try to put conditions on that love for you. Amen? If you don't do this, if you don't do that, or if you don't act this way or that way. But that's not, that's not love. That's control. That's manipulation. Okay? Because, you know, the word of God tells us also that in Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 58, 11 says, the Lord will guide you always. He will satisfy your need in a sun-scorched land and will strengthen your brain. You will be like a well-watered garden, like a spring whose waters never fail. Amen? Like a spring whose waters will never fail. God will never fail you. He will never leave you. Nor for sake. Amen. Hebrews 5 and 8. I will never leave you, nor will ever forsake you. Amen. When we get the idea that God really, really means that, sometimes I don't think we believe that God really means that. Because we do things and allow other people to do things and manipulate us in ways. Amen. You see, God said he'll never leave. He's always there with you every single day. All you have to do is just take some time and spend some time with him and listening to him, talking to him, praising him, reading his word, meditating on his word. Amen? So here's a verse of scripture, if you will, that I want you to just reread, read and reread this passage of scripture. When you find yourself trying to please people rather than God. And I gave it to you on two or three occasions. And that's in Galatians chapter 1 and verse 10. You read that passage of scripture and you read, reread that passage of scripture and you get that inside of you. Amen? Get that inside of you. You see, also uh, look at 1 Thessalonians as well. Chapter 2 and verse 3 through 8. Okay? You see? All right? And watch how God bless you with that. You see? Please God. There's nothing wrong with being cooperative with people and trying to help people and so forth. Amen? But when you call yourself trying to please people all the time, that bar never stops raising. Amen? The Lord promised to meet your inner need. For three elements. He promised you to meet your need. One is love. Amen. One is love. The other is significance. Love, significance, and security. Love, significance, and security. God promised to meet those needs. Amen. Those are the best needs everybody wants. And God promises to meet them. All you have to do is trust him. Amen. First, look at love. Look what he said. Look at love here. Look in Jeremiah chapter 31 and 3 says, look what it says. It says, I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have drawn you with loving kindness. Amen. I have loved you with an everlasting love. Now, everlasting love, that means a love that don't hate. That, that's a type of love that has no ending. It has no condition. God puts no conditions on his love. None whatsoever. He said it's an everlasting love. He said, I have drawn you with loving kindness. God is kind. He's merciful. He's good. He's loving. Amen. He tells us there, Jeremiah 29, verse 11. This is dealing with sickness. Look what he says. He, he gives us this. He says, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. 
Amen. You are significant. We are significant to God. We have significance. And we are significant to him. That's why he tells me, he said, I know the plans I have for you. You see, declared the Lord, plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Amen. Plans to give you a hope in a future. We're never without hope in Jesus Christ. He has a hope for us and he has a future for us. Amen. Don't think that where you are right now is all that there is. God has a future for you. And you are never without hope in him. That makes you very significant. That makes us very significant. You see? Look what he says here. Look at his security here for you. In Deuteronomy 31 and 8. His security. Look what the Lord said. The Lord said, or rather, the Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Amen. Do not be afraid. I do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. You see? Do not be afraid or do not be discouraged. You see? He goes before you and he will be with you. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. How much more security do you need? Only God can give you that kind of security. Amen. These are promises here. These are not maybes. These are promises. This love he's talking about and this significance that he's talking about and this security he's talking about. These are all promises. That God promises you. You see, uh, over, over in the book of Genesis, uh, Genesis, amen, chapter 20, verses 1 through 13, amen, where we, where, where, where we, uh, uh, where, where Abraham and, and his beautiful wife Sarah, amen, was also his half sister. See, see how Abraham, see how he manipulated that situation? They traveled to the to, to, to this here, Naviva region. Traveled to the Naviva region here. In this, in this foreign land. Abraham, the Bible says Abraham feared that the king would kill him in order to take his wife. Therefore, Abraham deceived King Abimelech by only stating, she is my sister. He manipulated Sarah to go along with his life by using the, this emotional appeal. This is how you can show your love, he said, and your kindness and your loyalty to me. You see, everywhere we go, just say of me, he is my brother. Amen. He said, this is how you can show your loyalty to me, by lying. By letting me manipulate you. Because I'm, I'm afraid they might kill me. So, amen. He said, now, 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 if you are someone or who you know, someone, amen, who know you in a manipulative, know that you're in a manipulative relationship and, and you admit it, amen, so you ask yourself, why do I stay in the relationship? Why do I stay in it? Amen. You, you remember the story over there in Genesis, I believe in chapter 29, where Uncle Laban, how he manipulated Jacob, promised Jacob that he would give him Rachel if he worked with He said, I'll work for you seven years if you let me have Rachel. See how he manipulated Jacob? Jacob worked seven years, and when it comes time to get Rachel, look what he did. He lied and tried to give him the leave. Y'all know what y'all know that story. Amen. Then he had to work another seven years just to get. Then he ended up with both of them. Are y'all listening to what I'm saying here? Okay. You see? So, 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 so don't don't stay in no manipulative relationship. You see. So, so if you're in one, why are you staying in? What's holding you in? All right? You see, each of us has God-given needs for love, for significance, 
and for security. Each and every one of us have, 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 have a need for that. Amen? You see, a desperate fear of rejection, it often paralyzes a person who is trying to make healthy decisions. You're trying to make healthy decisions. And it's always healthy to make a healthy decision about an unhealthy relationship. Amen? Whether it's a relationship with your job, whether it's a relationship in your marriage, or just a relationship in friendship, or whatever. Now, when that happens, listen carefully, we shall seek the Lord. We should seek the Lord. You know, uh, over there in uh, Psalms 34 and verses 4, it tells us, it says, I sought the Lord and he answered me or he heard me. He delivered me from all my fear. Amen. When you seek the Lord, God will hear you and he will answer you. Amen. God don't want us to fear nothing. But fear him. And then that's what he's talking about the reverential fear. We'll fear everything and everybody except God. We'll seek everything and everybody before we seek God. Amen. And that's the first place that we all go. Now, this is David talking here. This is David talking. And he gave a threefold witness of what the Lord does for his own. Amen. You see, first of all, he saved. Look at that, verse 4 through 8. He keeps. Y'all see that in verse 7? And he satisfied, as he tells us in verse 8. He said, he sought the Lord, and he was saved, amen, from the fears within him. And he cried to the Lord, and was delivered from the trouble around him. You see, God will deliver us from our trouble. He will deliver us from our fears. Amen? So, so how do you know whether you are being manipulated? How do you know? We don't talk a whole lot about that. Somebody said, well, how do I know? Well, number one is this. I want you to listen very carefully because I'm just about ready to, to, to break this off. Listen carefully. Number one, you need to evaluate. That's the first thing you need to do is evaluate. Are you doing what you are doing because you fear someone? Amen. Are you doing what you're doing because you fear someone else's disapproval? Or because it's the right thing for you to do? Amen. Evaluate that. Are you doing it because of someone else's disapproval? Or are you doing it because it's the right thing to do? That's only a question that you can ask. And be honest with yourself. Amen. The Bible tells us that, as I've been showing you here in that Galatians 1 and 10, am I now trying to win the approval of men or of God? Or am I trying to please men? If I were still trying to please men, I would not be a servant of Christ. You, you see, the Bible tells you you cannot serve two masters. You either love the one and hate the other. God said you're either for me or you're against me. You can't plead men. You can't plead the flesh. Use that time to please in God by studying his word in prayer, meditation, fasting. Amen. You see? So, so, so whatever you do, do it because it's the right thing to do. Not because you've been coerced or, or, or you're trying to prove or, or be approved by someone else. Do it because it's the right thing to do. You know, I was reading one day and I read uh, what D.L. Moody was preaching. Uh, he was preaching in England. And a work, one of his workers came up to him on the platform and told him that a very important nobleman had come into the hall. He said, it okay, may May the meeting be a blessing to him. That's what he told me. He said, well, may the meeting be a blessing to him. You know, I'm not going to stop preaching or stop teaching because somebody who's of, of, of importance comes into the sanctuary. Amen? 
You see? That was Mr. Moody's reply. And he just preached just as he had always preached. He just kept on preaching. He did as he does before. Without trying to impress anybody. Are you listening to what I'm saying? So always do what's right. Not because someone might approve or disapprove. Do it because it's the right thing to do. Because if you're always trying to do things because somebody else might approve or disapprove of you, amen, that's like a dog chasing his tail. You're being manipulated, you're being controlled. Okay? You see, people have been coerced into doing any number of things in the name of love, loyalty, and kindness. You see, if Sarah had encouraged her husband to trust God, rather than submitted to his request, they would have been spared so much sorrow and so much shame. Amen? But no, she went along with it. She let him manipulate. Just like uh, Jacob allowed Laban to manipulate him. Okay? All right. Now, now here's another good question. We're going to break it off. As a wife, still being, rather, is a wife, is she still being submissive to her husband if she takes a stand against his manipulation? Is she still being uh, submissive? Well, submission is not the issue here. Submission is of God. Manipulation is not of God. Manipulation is a sin because Faith is placed not in the Lord, but in the manipulative tactics used by someone else. Therefore, if a, if a wife perpetuates a sinful pattern of her husband, then guess what? She is not helping him, but rather hindering him. Okay, she is conforming to his sinful behavior. As he tells us in Romans 14 23 says, Everything that does not come from God is sin. And I think we're going to leave it right there. Amen? Everything that does not come from God is sin. All right? So we're going to break it off right there, and we're going to finish up uh, in this study next week. Okay? All right. I hope, they, I hope this has been a blessing to you. And I hope we're learning something from it. Amen. We don't teach lessons just to be teaching lessons because we want to be informative. We want to be a blessing. And, and, and we want it to, uh, to, to uh, grow you not only in your everyday life but in your spiritual walk with the Lord. Amen. So I hope, I hope the lesson has been a blessing to us. I hope you'll come back next week and, and let us finish up. Let us back here. Father, we thank you for the wonderful privilege of coming to your presence once again. We thank you for your word, dear Lord. We ask you, O God, to let these lessons be a blessing to us, Father. Let us take them and let us use them, dear Lord. And let us use it all for your glory. Let us not be manipulated by anything or anybody. Let us be submissive to you and you and you alone. We love you, we praise you, and we thank you, Father, for everything that you've done and everything that you're going to do. Bless us now as we uh, leave here today. Bless us as we come back again to finish studying your word. Bless us throughout the rest of this week and those whom we have to pray. This we pray in your name and for your sake. Amen. God bless you. Y'all have a blessed week and have a safe weekend. We'll talk to you. Next week. Amen.